Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, Ministers and Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you for this webinar jointly organized by the Embassy of Mexico in Belgium, the Federal Public Service of Foreign Affairs, Flanders Investment and Trade, Bologna Export and Investment Agency, Hub Brussels and the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency. This webinar is a follow-up of the Belgian economic mission that Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid presided over in Mexico in February 2019. It also aims at presenting the new opportunities offered to Belgian companies by the modernized Mexico-EU Global Agreement. We are particularly honored to welcome Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid with us today. She will make the introductory speech in a few minutes. We also have the privilege to welcome Her Excellency Mrs. Tatiana Cloutier, Minister for Economy and Foreign Trade as a representative of the Mexican government. She will be giving welcoming remarks together with Mrs. Annick van Kalster, Director General for Bilateral Affairs of the Federal Public Service of Foreign Affairs. After an introductory overview by His Excellency Mauricio Escanero, Ambassador of Mexico to Belgium, the CEOs of the Belgian Regional Export and Investment Agencies will present the lessons learned from the mission of 2019 in combination with the testimonial of a major company of their respective regions, Quality by Design, UCB and Solve. An interactive dialogue on the opportunities of the Mexico-EU global, global agreement will follow. Finally, we'll have the honor to listen to closing remarks by Vice Minister for Multilateral Affairs, Mrs. Marta Delgado, and Baron Peter Timmermans, CEO of the Federation of Enterprises of Belgium. But let us now start with our program. First of all, Your Royal Highness, may I invite you to take the floor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to open this first of its kind webinar. The follow-up of economic missions abroad is an excellent initiative, which I hold close to heart, and I hope that many will follow. This feedback mechanism will incorporate your thoughts and observations in order for us to continuously improve our services and provide an even better experience in the future. It is our hope that this initiative will foster a forum to identify even more potential agreements and will ultimately lead to more business opportunities. Additionally, we hope it will reaffirm that Belgian economic missions abroad are beneficial to our country, to its regions, to our businesses, and to our friendly relations with the host country. For all these reasons, I am incredibly happy that this initiative was taken today, and I thank the Embassy of Mexico in Belgium, the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency, and all federal and regional authorities participating in the webinar. We feel also very honored by the presence of the distinguished member of the government of Mexico. I take the opportunity to express to her my deep sorrow and sincere condolences for the loss of lives of people in Mexico City after the terrible accident earlier this month in your capital. At this webinar, I intend to listen carefully to your interventions and testimonials, especially if you mention that solutions have been found to problems that businesses or public authorities may have encountered. Perhaps today, a good practice will be created for the future. I conclude by wishing that we meet again in person as soon as possible with the goal 
of successfully continuing our collective work on economic missions. Thank you again, and please remain assured of my full commitment and support to your work, to our work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness, for delivering this introductory address of our webinar and for reminding us of the importance of, importance of economic missions to the Belgian economy and the development of bilateral relations. We are very honored to have you with us today. Next, I have the great pleasure of introducing Her Excellency Tatiana Cloutier, Mexican Minister of Economy and Foreign Trade. Mrs. Cloutier has been holding this important portfolio since December 8, 2020. Mrs. Cloutier is a well-known Mexican educator, politician, and writer. May I give you the floor, Your Excellency? Hello, Her Excellency, Princess Astrid, Minister Marcelo Ebrard. We appreciate uh, General Director Anik Van Cluster. It is an honor to share with you the inauguration of this important webinar. I appreciate your excellency, the, your sympathy towards our country. I want to thank you for the kind invitation to speak before such a distinguished audience. This high level event is a great initiative that gathers partners, Belgians and Mexicans to get to know each other better and identify opportunities ahead. Mexico and Belgium are strategic partners that share common values at the bilateral and multilateral level Strengthening our relations will help bring prosperity to our societies, especially in these challenging times. Both countries have developed a strong economic ties as both nations believe in the benefits of free trade and social inclusion, making progress towards making a stronger trade and in investment relations. Belgium is Mexico's seventh largest trading partner and the fourth source of foreign direct investment among the member states of the European Union. From 1999 to 2020, our trade grew 340% at the average annual rate of 7.3%. Although Mexico and Belgium still have, a, a, although Mexico and Belgium have these important economic ties, we do have opportunities to path that could strengthen our economic cooperation in addition to trade and investment promotion. Mexico has identified areas of opportunities in sectors such as aerospace, auto parts, and pharmaceutical and information and communication technologies. Both countries may also further develop an economy as partnerships being the framework of the Pacific Alliance as a result of Belgium bring an observer state since 2014. One of our main objectives as Minister of Economics in Mexico, it is to re reactivate the economy in the context of the post-pandemic -pandem recovery. For this reason, I presented an economic reactivation program that includes four axes. One, domestic market and employment. Two, investment facilitation, international trade, the third one, and the four regions and sectors. In the four excess, in our trade policy pillars, we have inclusion, innovation, and diversification. The bilateral relation with Belgium, it is one of the most important. So I am very interested in knowing your thoughts on how we can increase our collaboration so that both countries can quickly return to the path of growth. I would like to highlight one of the principal axes of the Mexican 2030 agenda, which is gender equality, giving the importance of, begin, of being inclusive and working hand to hand. As I have mentioned it in, other, in the other fora, we will not leave any woman behind. Together with women and men, we will be able to face all the new challenges. As a consequence of COVID-19 pandemic, recently trade flows have reflected negative trends, which highlight the importance of continuing to develop our trade and investment relationship to unleash our full potential, in addition to support sustainable growth and employment on both sides. Foreign trade can play a crucial role as a driver of the post-pandemic 
economic recovery. It already played a role in the wake up of the economy crisis in 2008, but the need to have an adequate and renovated framework to increase our bilateral trade and foreign investment. In that regard, the modernizing of the European Mexico FTA, it is a critical element of Mexico's trade policy and an instrument that will drive the post-pandemic recovery and will bring Mexican and Belgian companies opportunities aiming mainly the, the SMES. We appreciate and count on the Belgian support for the formalization of the agreement. I am aware of Belgium companies interested in Mexico to take advantage of the USMCA. Let me assure you that investing in Mexico, it is the best option to access the North American market and to increase your competitiveness. We are open to working closely together to make the most of the benefits of this agreement for our countries. I am confident that the Belgium companies will be able to continue to benefit from the legal framework provided by this mechanism. As a result of the visit of the Belgium companies to Mexico in 2019, some of the businessmen requested support to eliminate trade barriers. Accordingly, we have been working on reducing response times to facilitate imports. We have also been, a, been working with the OECD on the one-step shop to make the process faster and more efficient. Mexico, it is a platform for Belgium companies to North America, offering solid human capital and access to the largest market besides being a global player. Our country has a particular interest in promoting business and investment opportunities towards the productive sector and increasing added value focusing on the south southern region of our country. In terms of bilateral cooperation, the result in a small and medium-sized enterprises, Industry 4.0 and dual education are auspicious. I'm sure that these programs will promote synergies between Mexican and Belgian economy actors doing their part to achieve a stronger relationship between both nations. As we have mentioned before, Mexico and Belgium are strategic partners, and it is our interest to continue strengthening our relationship and working together to achieve this purpose. Given the agenda, I foresee a great discussion ahead by the distinguished par panelists participating in today's web webinar. I wish you a very fruitful dialogue today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for your participation, first of all, and also for highlighting the axis of um, economic and trade policy in Mexico at the moment, as well as stressing the perspectives uh, that Belgian companies can encounter in your country. Thank you very much. Next, we have the pleasure to welcome as a guest speaker, Mrs. Annick van Kalst, Director General for Bilateral Affairs of the Federal Public Service of Foreign Affairs of Belgium. Mrs. Van Kalster served as ambassador to the United Arab Emirates and later on as ambassador to Bulgaria, Albania, Kosovo, and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. During her diplomatic career, she also had positions at the Royal Palace and the Belgian Embassy in Beirut. Mrs. Van Kalster, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Stoss. Your Royal Highness, Mrs. Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, two years ago, in February 2019, the Belgian Economic Mission, led by Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid, was the first trade mission of this magnitude to be received by His Excellency President Andrés Manuel López Obrador. The program in Mexico City and Monterrey was ambitious, with numerous high-level political contacts and events highlighting the Belgian expertise in sectors such as ports, sports equipment and technology, food and beverage, diamond, healthcare, and smart buildings. We went to Mexico with the conviction that the second largest economy in Latin America would offer a great deal of opportunities to our companies. And I think, Mrs. Minister, you have just uh, reconfirmed that. Likewise, Belgium, as the gateway to the EU, felt confident uh, it had a lot to offer to Mexican investors and exporters. 
We were really convinced that this big trade mission would give impetus to the further deepening of our commercial ties. And I must say we were not disappointed. The economic mission resulted directly in new contracts and in new Belgian investments in Mexico, namely in the dredging sector in the port of Tuxpan, in the automotive industry in Nuevo León, and the creative sector in Mexico City. The economic mission also brought positive results for the food sector as we made significant progress to reach an agreement on the export of apple and pears to Mexico. We were also very happy to hear just before the start of this webinar that the Mexican authorities have lifted the embargo on pork meat. And of course, we hope that it will soon be possible to export poultry meat too, but thank you already for that. Unexpectedly then, while we were following up on the economic mission, COVID-19 struck. Nobody could foresee that one year later, the virus would claim so many victims, including in Mexico and in Belgium, and that we would be so deeply affected in the field of global trade and economy. It has been only two years since the mission took place, but we are living in another world now. The pandemic affected the plans of companies in different ways, but I'm sure their efforts were not in vain. In this regard, I'm looking forward to hearing the first panel of this webinar on the success stories from the economic mission. I'm confident that once the pandemic is under control, our companies will bounce back on the relations they established between the, with their Mexican counterparts and also that trade relations between our two countries will rapidly return to normal and even that they will exceed the pre-crisis levels. However, we should not return to business as usual, but learn the methods. The possibilities of global and the fragility of our this lesson Build better. Belgium and Mexico building a more sustainable and fair both have and they can also launch organizations. The pandemic grows that nobody is safe, nobody is safe. In this regard. I think you're on mute at the moment, Mrs. Van Kester. Sorry. I was, sorry, thank you. I was ejected. So uh, I think you lost me when I was speaking about the vaccine. So I'll just come back uh, uh, at that point. Um, because the story about the vaccines clearly illustrates how interconnected we are. And there is, of course, a temptation uh, for some to withdraw within our own borders. Uh, it may seem reassuring, but it is clearly an illusion in the long run. We should tear down the walls that separate us and not build new ones. This is why, as Belgium, we firmly believe that international sustainable trade and not protectionism is part of the solution to deal with the economic crisis brought about by the pandemic. More than ever, Belgium supports a rules-based global order and believes in free and fair trade. The new generation of free trade agreements of the European Union, such as the modernized EU-Mexico Global Agreement negotiated in 2020, is the kind of tool that could boost trade between the partners while taking into account fundamental challenges like climate change and workers' rights. If approved by the EU member states, the modernized agreement between the EU and Mexico may strengthen our economic ties in the following decades. I think this agreement would be beneficial for both countries. For instance, the New Deal would scrap high tariffs on Belgian food and drinks, which is obviously good news, not only for the renowned Belgian producers of chocolate, beers, fruits or meat, but also for the Mexican consumers. The second panel of the interactive dialogue on this agreement will show us the opportunities the agreement could offer. Belgium's position on the agreement will be defined in due course by all governments evolved. 
But in the meantime, I think this should not prevent us from reaping without delay the benefits of the enhanced relationship between our two countries. The relationship we got even in a stronger way back on track uh, two years ago. So thank you very much. I wish you all an interesting and fruitful webinar. Thank you very much, Mrs. Van, Van Gasser, for this message, for reminding us, first of all, of how successful the 2019 uh, mission had been, and also for presenting the global picture of uh, Belgium's uh, uh, trade policy focus and the opportunities that lie ahead for us. Thank you very much for your participation today. Our next uh, guest speaker will be His Excellency Mauricio Escanero, Ambassador of Mexico to Belgium and Luxembourg and head of the Mission of Mexico to the European Union. Ambassador Escanedo has experience in bilateral and multilateral diplomacy, as well as international responsibilities at the United Nations and UNESCO. He previously served as Ambassador of Mexico to South Africa and numerous other high offices. Mr. Ambassador, I have the pleasure of giving you the floor. Thank you. Your Royal Highness, Princess Astrid of Belgium, Minister Tatiana Cloutier, Vice Minister Marta Delgado, Director General Annick Van Karster, distinguished participants. It is an honor to address you in this follow-up meeting to the important Belgium economic mission to Mexico, led by Her Royal Highness in 2019, looking anew at the opportunities that the modernized Mexico-European Union Global Agreement is opening for the benefits of our two countries. The visit of Princess Astrid to Mexico was timely and fruitful. Her dialogue with the president of Mexico was especially warm and meaningful. As ambassador of Mexico to Belgium, it was my highest honor to accompany this important visit with many of you. Thanks to this visit, our relations at the political level, as well as our excellent relations at the economic and cultural dimensions, have been decisively strengthened. As a result, our bilateral relations have reached one of their highest points with bright and encouraging prospects. Notably, the visit coincided with the beginning of the mandate of our president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, giving us an excellent early start to enhance synergies towards revitalizing our bilateral friendship and cooperation. Building upon this momentum, we have continued collaborating with the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency, AMFIT, AWEX, and Hope Brussels, as well as with the Belgian companies that participated in the mission with positive. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your kind engagement and looking ahead as we join efforts for a solid post-COVID recovery, the modernization of the Mexico is bound to give a substantial boost to our already strong political economic operation. On trade and investment with a win-win spirit, the modernized global agreement provides a much broader and mutually beneficial access to Mexican and European markets, including the most advanced disciplines, relations, as well as pioneering commitments in support of the fight against corruption, of economic cooperation and sustainable development. I'm certain that the modernized global agreement will lead to a stronger strategic partnership between Mexico and the core of the European Union with tangible benefits for our societies. This aspiration, let me reiterate the commitment of Mexico to the continued strengthening of our relationship in the years to come. Thank you and much success. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for sharing uh, this message with us, for outlining the scope of our bilateral relations and also um, the opportunities that lie ahead of us. Thank you very much. For the following part of the program, I will first of all welcome Mrs. Claire Tillekaert, CEO of Lenders Investment and Trade, and Mr. Martin Reniers, Managing Partner of Quality by Design, 
who will share with us their lessons, uh, lessons learned and success stories from the viewpoint of Flanders during the mission. Um, Claire, you have the floor. Thank you, Fabien. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. After a couple of years with growing trade figures between Belgium and Mexico, 2020 has been, as we all know, quite challenging. For all those that takes the lion's share in Belgium bilateral trade with Mexico has also been affected. However, in 2020, 2020, total exports from Flanders to Mexico still amounted to more than 1 billion euros, which represents a decrease by 14% compared to the previous year. And on a positive note, during the first months of 2021, Mexico became the 36th client of Flanders coming from position 28 the year before and ranked at position 18 among Flanders import partners countries coming from position 19. So we're on a positive path again. The year 2020 also brought positive news. We are glad that the EU and Mexico reached an agreement in principle for a modernized association agreement as it could create nice trade perspectives for our Flemish exporters of goods and services. Think of the gradual import tariff reductions to 0% that the agreement foresees on certain food products such as chocolate, biscuits, frozen potato products, poultry meat, pork dairy products, ice cream, jam, apples, etc. And the updated agreement would also make it easier for our companies to participate in public tenders in Mexico. I'm very proud to see that even in difficult times following the COVID pandemic, our companies have shown a lot of resilience and continue to thrive on foreign markets, including the Mexican market. A nice success story has been realized by the company Quality by Design that participated in the Belgian Economic Mission of 2019. Mr. Martin Remiers, managing partner, will bring a testimonial about it in a few moments. And they are not the only ones that managed to enhance the business in Mexico ever since. We know that a few companies that joined the mission in 2019 are in full preparation of setting up in Mexico and some contracts could be signed as well in the field of machinery, but also in the infrastructure sector. Another nice outcome of the economic mission for Flanders is the opening of the Mexican market for Belgian pears, as 95% of, of the Belgian production of pears comes from Flanders. In 2020, the first Belgian pears appeared in Mexican supermarkets. In total, we shipped some 21 tons of pears to Mexico last year. The good relations that we established during the mission between the Belgian Federal Agency for the Safety of the Food Chain and its Mexican counterpart, Sinasica, led to another breakthrough in October 2020, with the opening of the Mexican market for Belgian apples. Belgium is only the second European country that is allowed to export apples to Mexico. So the perspectives, the perspectives for our delicious Belgian fruit in Mexico are promising. Vlam, Flanders Agriculture Marketing Board that participated in the mission as well, Vlam plans to organize promotion campaigns in the near future for the Belgian pear variety Conférence among Mexican buyers and consumers. It goes without saying that Mexico, that is known for its open and diversified economy, and is a, that is our second export market in Latin America, continues to offer interesting cooperation opportunities for our companies in various sectors. That is why Flanders Investment and Trade continues to put Mexico on the map as an interesting potential market to explore in cooperation with our fifth office in Mexico City, which is headed by Wim van Kouten, our Trade and Investment Commissioner. Last month, Flanders Investment and Trade and uh, the Energy Technology Club of Agoria jointly organized a webinar on the energy market in Mexico. Recently, we also launched the Start to Export to Mexico trajectory. This project is meant for Flemish exporters with no 
or little experience on the Mexican market, as well as companies that want to reboot their export to Mexico. Participants will be intensively prepared during four months before tackling the Mexican market, and it will result in a trade mission to Mexico City in November this year. Interested French companies can still register for this trade event. And in October next year, we will organize another multi-sectoral trade mission to Mexico, and we hope that a lot of companies will join us on that occasion too. Let you get inspired by the testimonial that Mr. Martin Reniers, managing partner of the company Quality by Design, will now bring. Mr. Reniers, the floor is yours. Thank you, Claire. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Martin Reniers, and I'm the COO of the QBD Group. Now, for those of you that don't know QBD, um, we are a consultancy company with a very specific focus on the life science industry. And with QBD, we have the mission to support life science companies worldwide by providing them specialized services throughout the entire product life cycle. So this includes support with clinical trials, regulatory advice, quality related advice. Um, and today I want to tell you more about how we experience this in Mexico. Now, as you can see on the next slide, QBD is a relatively young company. We exist for 10 years. And for the most part, we have been active outside of Belgium. In fact, the first project we did as a company was in the Netherlands. Um, today, I can say that about 50% of our company is based in Belgium. So that's Flanders, Wallonia, Brussels, uh, which is a little bit more than 150 people. And the other 50% is based abroad. So that's another 150 people, of which a big part are working in, uh, in Mexico. Now, if we zoom in on Mexico, you can see uh, on the slides that we started the office in 2016. And in 2019, at the time of the economic mission, uh, our Mexican office had grown from about 20 people to around 30 people. And what we noticed is that it kept on hovering around these 30 people. Now, fast forward to today. Today, we have uh, more than 75 people in the Mexican office. Uh, we have uh, an office in Mexico City, but also in uh, Guadalajara. And we provide services to more companies than ever before. Uh, our team in Mexico performs projects not only in Mexico, but also in other Spanish-speaking uh, countries in the region and even in the US. And then the question is, was this growth thanks to the 2019 economic mission? Uh, or was it something that was uh, bound to happen? Well. To be honest, I believe that the fundamentals were always there. If, if you look at Mexico, you have 130 million inhabitants, uh, close to 10 million people are living in, in Mexico City. You have a literacy rate that is growing every year, which is very important for us, for QBD, because we're a knowledge-based company. So that means that we need to be able to recruit smart, well-educated people. That's definitely possible in, uh, in Mexico. And so for me, I think the potential has always been there in Mexico. The only thing that we as QBD needed to do was, was really tap into that potential. And that's where the economic mission really helped us. So, so how did it help us? Well, first of all, it, it allowed us to visit customers. Uh, it allowed us to visit new customers. It allowed us to share ideas with other entrepreneurs that were doing business in Mexico. And it allowed us to, to, to share experience and learn from each other. But I think the most important part is that it allowed us to see the true potential of Mexico. And if you go to the next slide, I can give you one very concrete example of that. As you can see with QBD, we have two important focal points, medical devices and ATMPs. Um, I'm going to talk about ATMPs now. And for those of you that don't know ATMPs, think stem cells, think personalized cancer vaccines, think state-of-the-art treatments that are tailored for a specific patient. And with QBD, we decided five years ago that ATMPs was going to be a real focal point for us. So we developed a software program to support process development for ATMPs. We developed artificial intelligence to control ATMP production processes. You know, we really went all in. But until the economic mission, we always believed that our market for this innovation would be Belgium, would be Europe, maybe the US. 
And it was only by going to Mexico and meeting people there and, and interacting with, um, with different companies there that, that we noticed that there was also a potential in Mexico. Um, and that also in Mexico, uh, companies are experimenting with these new life-changing ch treatments with, with these new technologies. And, and so for me, that's really, that's really key. It, it, this economic mission opened our eyes to the true potential of Mexico. And so the message that I wanted to bring across in these four minutes, and I hope I was able to convince everyone, is that, first of all, QBD in Mexico is definitely a success. Uh, the economic mission was really a driver for that success because it allowed us to, to grow much faster than we could have done otherwise. But more importantly, I think what I also want to bring across is that Mexico is, is a country that is here to stay and that companies that want success in the future should definitely put Mexico on their roadmap. We did it with QBD and, and we're very happy we did it. And so I'm definitely open to help uh, everyone that, uh, that wants to do business in Mexico uh, and share my ideas in, uh, in more than four minutes. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Reniers, for sharing this inspiring uh, success story with us today. And thank you also to Claire Pillekaert uh, for giving us the latest trends in trade between Flanders and Mexico and informing us also of future initiatives. And now for the Wallonia region, I have uh, the pleasure to give the floor to Mrs. Pascal Del Cominet, CEO of AVEX, and after that to Mr. Xavier Machea, Head of EU Corporate Affairs of UCB. Pascal, would you kindly take the floor, please? Thank you, Fabienne. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies and Ministers, distinguished guests, it is for me an honor to attend this webinar and I thank the Embassy of Mexico for the initiative and all the partners involved for the continuous good collaboration. The princely mission to Mexico was of great importance for us. Mexico has been a long-standing economic partner for Wallonia, our second largest trading market in Latin America. The Princely Mission in 2019 was the largest mission, economic mission Wallonia ever had in Latin America, with nearly 50 companies being part of the mission and almost 80 delegates. This is easily explained by the potential that Mexico represents in terms of business opportunities, but also the adequacy of the industrial and technological offer of our region for this large market ideally located between North America and South America. The good prospects provided by the modernization of the free trade agreement between the European Union and Mexico also set a favorable framework for the mission. Key economic sectors of Wallonia were represented, namely the health sector and the pharmaceutical industry, but also niche technologies and equipment in field as diverse as energy, audiovisual, digital, construction, infrastructure, clean tech and our food specialties. It is around some of these sectors that our contribution was focused in terms of organizing joint activities during the mission. I will mention here the round table in healthcare in presence of the Me Mexican Minister of Health and the event Sabores de Belgica in Mexico City dedicated to our gastronomy. We are also pleased to have several visits in Mexico City and Monterrey organized by major flagship companies of the Wallonia industry, such as IBA, John Cockrell, EVS and UCB, whose representative will speak in a few minutes. The mission was a great momentum to capitalize on the business opportunities in Mexico, but also on the efforts AWEX has been devoted for years on this promising market. It allowed many companies to conclude contracts either during the mission, thanks to the work carried out upstream, or as a follow-up to the mission. In total, nearly 20 deals were reported to our office. Those success stories were deeply facilitated by the mission. It was a support both for companies prospecting the Mexican market, but also for those already doing business there. UCB is a very good example of a company that has been established for years in Mexico and that seized the opportunity of the princely mission to inaugurate its new offices in Mexico City. I will now give the floor to Mr. Xavier Ormachea, Head of EU Corporate Affairs of UCB, 
uh, who will talk about the positive returns such participation provided to the company. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Madame Delcominet. Your Royal Highness, Madame Minister, uh, distinguished guests, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to share the experience of the 2019 um, economic mission to Mexico. Um, UCB is a Belgian company with approximately 8,000 people across the world, and, and we try to bring uh, valuable solutions to people suffering from severe disease. In Mexico, we are still a young company. We're going to celebrate 25 years of presence in the market in 2022. Uh, we have approximately 200 colleagues who are trying all across the country to bring solutions to patients suffering from severe disease. On the next slide, and as mentioned by your Royal Highness, um, economic missions are about building friendly relationships in the country. And for us, the 2019 mission in, in Mexico was an opportunity for UCB. As I said, with 200 uh, colleagues in, in the country, it was an opportunity to connect with stakeholders. Um, this mission was kind of an amplifier for us. It was a catalyst, which has really enabled to connect with uh, suppliers, with policymakers, with stakeholders, and, and also, as you can see on the picture, to organize a health forum, which was really a key moment for us. All this um, would have not been possible without, I would say, the spotlight and, and uh, the really the opportunity that the mission could bring to us. On the next slide, beyond the commercial aspects and, and beyond the, the opportunity, on the next slide, please. Um, the, the commercial aspect is, of course, very key. But for a company like UCB and, and for the 200 colleagues that are working in Mexico, there is a sense of belonging and identity that this mission is also um, taking to the 200 colleagues that are working in Mexico. Working for a Belgian company abroad means something. It, it is, there is a sense of pride that we, 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 we got there. And they, they will never forget that moment. They can really um, have that sense of identity with them. And this mission really took it with them. We look forward to celebrate 25 years of presence in the market in 2022. We really, really have um, key operations in Mexico, and this mission was a very key moment for us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Homachea, for sharing UCB's uh, experience in Mexico with us and also underlining the catalyst role of the mission. And thank you to uh, Mrs. Del Cominet for stressing the importance of the relation uh, of Wallonia with Mexico and highlighting the main sectors and also um, the, the uh, role that the mission uh, played. And next, for the next um, testimonial of the Brussels region, we will welcome Mrs. Isabel Gripa, CEO of Hub Brussels, and Mr. Arnaud Jacquet, Vice President Government Affairs, Head of Global Exploration and Business Development of Solvay. Isabel, may I invite you to address our audience, please? Yes. Thank you, thank you, Fabienne. Uh, Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, I'm really happy to be here today and to remember all the good memories we had during the princely mission that took place in Mexico City and Monterrey uh, a little over two years ago now. Uh, today we have the pleasure of welcoming you, no fewer than 193 participants, among which 66 representatives are from Brussels including some who participated in the princely mission. Thank you for being among us today. We participated in the princely mission with a delegation of about 15 Brussels companies from sectors as various as food and beverages, real estate, ICT and telecom, chemical industry, energy, environment, and clean technologies. We also collaborated with federations, such as the Federal Agency for the Safety of the Food Chain, Belgian Building Research Institutes, and Confederation Constructions, with whom we co-organized a successful seminar in Monterrey. Brussels has been a pioneer for many years in an area where economy and environment match passive construction. We have organized several trade missions and seminars, or I should say webinars nowadays, uh, aiming to highlight our expertise recognized worldwide in this area. 
This seminar in Monterrey, which welcomed more than a uh, hundred Mexican participants from the construction sector, shows the, the interest that Brussels created in the other side of the Atlantic. To exchange our expertise and know-how, we also visited the Garden, the Garden Santa Fe, the first underground and passive shopping center in Latin America. In Mexico City, the seminar organized with our colleagues from FIT around, around smart cities in which Solve was involved to showcase their technologies for air quality improvement was in line with our ambition. More than ever, we have trying to turn environmental goals into economic opportunities. We are putting the transition at the center of our economic strategy through the enhanced support for small and medium-sized businesses and through the development of a circular economy oriented towards new technologies, more efficient in resources. According to the feedback received, the Brussels companies were able to take advantage of this mission to develop their commercial relations, both with local prospects, as well as internally within the Belgian delegation. This mission wouldn't have been such a success without the support of our representatives abroad and in Brussels. Namely, Wim van Kouteren, economic attaché based in Mexico City, who represents both Flanders and Brussels interests, Peter Rembo, FIT representative based in Lima, who came to reinforce the team, but also Antoine Evrard, Belgian ambassador who was based in Mexico City. Uh, as well, uh, all, uh, everybody know, he has received now other important responsibilities. Congratulations to him. Without forgetting our local team from Hub Brussels, known as the Hubsters, Sophie Damer and Florence Lanzmann. And last but not least, I also would like to underline the very important role played by your Royal Highness Princess Astrid, which is an undeniable asset for the success of those trade missions. I'll now give the floor to Mr. Arnaud Jacquet, Vice President of Government Affairs at Solvay, who will share with us his view on the princely mission. We hope that those success stories will encourage you to take the opportunity to participate in the following princely missions, to prospect foreign markets and take advantage of our network spread around the world. International trade is also a good way to weather the storm and pave the way for our economic recovery. Thank you for your attention and Arnaud, the floor is yours. Thanks, Isabella. Um, <clears throat> Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, Minister, thanks for this webinar. I am Arnaud Jacquet, Vice President of Government Affairs for Solvay. And uh, the, the Belgium Economic Mission was a real success for us. Uh, firstly, uh, because uh, we met a lot of high level uh, person and responsible uh, in um, we with the public authorities and uh, industrial partner. Next slide, please. First, Solvay in Mexico. Uh, Solvay, Solvay is a, a science, science uh, company, and uh, we are set up in uh, in Mexico since uh, more than uh, sixty years now, and uh, especially in Mexico, we are multi uh, business office. That means we mixed a different. Go um, Global business unit of the group. Um, in Mexico, uh, we are 335 million of net sales uh, US dollar, and more than uh, almost now 400 employees and four major industrial plants. Especially, uh, SciTech is a composite materials uh, plant, very important in Mexico. Next slide, please. The first success of the uh, Belgium Economic Mission uh, to Mexico for us, that was uh, the participation of the top manager of Solvay. Seven people were present and uh, we participated in uh, 15 events differ at different level uh, for one seminar and uh, especially for eight very high level meetings with public authorities and industrial partners. Uh, for that, I would like really to thank uh, all the agencies and the work uh, of the embassies. That means the Belgium embassy in Mexico and the Mexican embassy in, uh, in Brussels. They support us very well for, to, to reach this 
high level meeting. Two, um, so they had two specific um, mega trends in Mexico. One that was around the sustainability with a solution, technology solution for air and water treatment. That means we we met uh, very key people uh, in Mexico, like Conagua, Sedema, uh, and Senarmat. Uh, that was very interesting meeting uh, to, to explain and to, um, to introduce different technology uh, to improve the water, um, the water treatment or the air pollution. We have very, very interesting meeting, but Today, uh, we think uh, the regulation, uh, the water regulation and the air regulation uh, can become really uh, a good support for the implementation of, the, of these new technologies. Um, we, we can uh, discover a, a lot of issue, uh, but also uh, the opportunities to solve them in the future with a good coordination and collaboration with the different minister and uh, agency. The second uh, other um, <coughs> important um, topics we had that was about the uh, new materials, uh, the composite materials, uh, thermoplastic uh, and specialty polymer uh, materials. And for that, we, are, we had uh, two very interesting meetings uh, during the Belgian Economic Commission, one with Pemex, uh, because we are already uh, partners with Pemex, but we, can, we couldn't improve and uh, present uh, different technology for the non-metallic pipe and other uh, technology for the future to, to support uh, Pemex to, to improve the sustainability of that process. And the second that was a very um, surprising meeting we had with the Minister of Defense. Uh, we participated just uh, at the first meeting with the Minister of Defense, just like this. And finally, when we introduced Solvay, after we had a very good discussion with some generals. Um, and uh, finally, two, two days later, we organized a new meeting with them uh, to discuss and to, uh, to discuss and to present uh, how material like a composite and specialty polymer. That means specialty polymer is a high level plastic. Um, and now we have a collaboration with the Minister of Defense. Uh, of course, with the COVID, uh, the time is longer, but uh, we have very good uh, discussion to develop some solution uh, to support um, so, some um, development with the Minister of Defense. Um, in conclusion, for survey, uh, the, this um, Belgium Economic Mission uh, to Mexico was very interesting first because we discover uh, a lot of things and a lo lot of opportunities we could imagine we, we couldn't imagine before, and uh, we get uh, a lot of we um, uh, a lot of very high level uh, connection uh, with authorities, but also also with uh, um, industrial partners. And uh, for us, of of course, the COVID uh, um, block or uh, don't allow to go um, further like as we, we wanted, but uh, now we, we, we start a, a, new, um, a new discussion now and it seems uh, it's good for the future and uh, we were really happy and uh, to, to participate to, to this mission. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jacquet, for giving us a clear view of how important service activities in, in Mexico are and, and showing also how the, the mission contributed to, to even further success. And thank you also to Mrs. Gripa for confirming um, that the mission was a success for Brussels companies and for the region as a whole. Um, for the next part, we will now start an interactive dialogue on the opportunities of the Mexico-EU Global Agreement. And to this purpose, His Excellency Ambassador Mario Chacon, Coordinator for Europe of the Mexican Strategy for Global Economic Impulse of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico, will be our moderator and will introduce the panelists. Ambassador Chacon, may I invite you to take the floor, please? Thank you very much. Um, Your, Your Royal Highness, Princess Astrid, Minister Tatiana Cloutier, Vice Minister Delgado, 
Madame Van Kalster, Baron Peter Timmermans. We, Mexico and the European Union, decided in 2016 to launch negotiations to update our original agreement that entered into force in 2000. 20 years later, the world has changed rapidly. The past year and a half, the pandemia has transformed the way we interact and do business. 2020 was defined by the COVID-19 pandemic and its severe impact on every aspect of life. The world has suffered not only a global health emergency, but also a human and economic crisis that has exacerbated global inequalities. We have to work together. Cooperation will help us confront the new challenges. We need global efforts to solve global problems. The world has gone digital. Artificial intelligence is advancing rapidly in some fields. The economy is becoming greener and will be more each year. We have found that life sciences are more important each day, that science and research in vaccines is vital for all. However, no, not only that, we can see clearly that cooperation among countries, multilateral approaches, and a global perspective are crucial to manage the health crisis and to find long-term solutions. The crisis has shown us how vulnerable and how closely interconnected we are. We have seen production in some industries fall down and in some cases totally stop. Value chains have broken apart. We need to reestablish them and to have reliable business partners to make them more resilient. The new global agreement between Mexico and the European Union gives us the opportunity to renew and strengthen our business links in line with the new global economic outlook. We will now underline some of the opportunities that arise with the Mexican-EU Global Agreement, answering questions posed by some of you. First, I give the floor to Victor Aguilar, representative of the Mexican Ministry of Economy in Brussels. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Royal Highness Princess Astrid, Excellency Cloutier. I understand that uh, there have been some uh, several questions about the, uh, the new uh, trade, the modernization agreement. Uh, let me uh, tell you about the main regulatory contribution of the modernization of this new agreement, uh, which we can summarize as follows. Better certainty, meaning clear rules, strengthening trade that is increasing and improving access to products for both markets protection of trade investment and geographical indication and this modernization allows us to adapt the treaty to the current reality of our trade relations in this new agreement we address important issues that were not considered back in 1999 such as telecommunication sustainable development transparency SMEs, and of course, e-commerce. Allow me to, to mention a piece of information to better understand the dimension of this modernization. Of the 33 chapters, 16 are new. The rest are extended and, unda and updated. Let me briefly comment on three essential chapters. The investment chapter. Between 1999 and 2007, Mexico signed 15 reciprocal investment agreements with 16 uh, of the current members of the European Union. These agreements are not identical and could potentially create inequality and uncertainty for investors. In the modernization of the trade agreement, a chapter was included that, that will replace these reciprocal investment agreements, balancing the level of treatment for all parties. The idea is to create a regulatory environment that encourages the exchange of capital flows. These chapters, uh, this chapter will allow and facilitate the establishment and operation of the companies in both parties, ensuring that those investments 
enjoy effective competition with, without meeting performance and discrimination requirements, receive protection in cases of expropriation and with equal treatment as national, and have adequate mechanisms to deal with disputes that may arise from any breach by the receiving state. For that reasons, a fundamental aspect of this chapter is that it is established a permanent tribu tribunal to attend and resolve claims and disputes initiated by an investor. Uh, the chapter about uh, rule of origin. In this chapter, the provision regarding the requirements to, uh, to consider a product as originated are updated. This is around 55% of the specific rule of origin to include new production processes in products such as chemicals, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, automobiles, and electric appliances. For example, in, in the chemical sector, processes such as chemical reaction and purification will be considered. The rule of origin of the automotive sector is all also modified to take into account technological advances. These chapters, this chapter also modifies the article of direct transport so that the products traded between the parties may be subject to separation when they are sent from a third country. It will also eliminate, eliminate the EUR1 certificate in order to be replaced by a declaration in the invoice. In the chapter about technical barriers to trade, the objective of this chapter is to facilitate trade by removing unnecessary technical barriers to trade, improve transparency, and promote greater cooperation and good regulatory practices. Three sectoral annexes were negotiated to formalize the best international regulatory practices applicable to motor vehicles, pharmaceutical products, and wine and spirits. To reduce cost in the export and import processes, provisions were agreed to, to avoid duplication of requirements. And something that is very innovative is the appointment of chapter co coordinators who will work together to facilitate its implementation and cooperation between the parties regarding technical barriers to trade. This will mean improving cooperation in the development and enhancement of standards, technical regulation, and conformity assessment pro procedures. Of course, this is just a quick summary, but there is much more on the modernization. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador, you are on mute at the moment. Can you unmute yourself, please? Yes. Uh, it's the turn now of Adrián Herrera, representative of the Mexican Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Brussels. Adrián. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Uh, Your Royal Highness, uh, Secretary Cloutier, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Why the agricultural sector is important for Mexico and the European Union, and in particular to Belgium? Well, Mexico represents a potential market of more than 127 million inhabitants uh, with a young population. This is the fifth, uh, 15th largest economy in the world and the second largest in Latin America. In agriculture, our country is the 10th largest exporter and the ninth global importer. Last year, the primary sector has an annual growth rate that was positive and trade was an important strategy in this result. What does it mean Europe in this context? Europe is a critical partner towards market diversification. More than 70% of our agricultural trade is with only one single country. So Europe means the option to bring more trade to our consumers and also more Mexican products to the European consumers. Trade is also a strategy to face external shocks that are particularly uh, feasible in agriculture as extreme weather events, volatility in commodity prices, and as we are recently uh, facing out the, the COVID-19 crisis. Europe and Mexico share also common goals such as sustainability in agriculture, food systems, the promotion of organic products, and the importance of open trade and avoiding export restrictions. Last year, agri-food fisheries and trade value was uh, 2.5 billion euros. 
And in this uh, setting, Belgium is the fourth largest market for Mexican agri-food export in the European Union. What are the new opportunities that a modernized agreement will bring to, to Mexico and to the EU? As you must recall, in the former agreement, products that are benefit from export subsidies were excluded from the tariff preferences, such as cereals, dairy, sugar, some fruits and vegetables, and meat products. With the reform of the, this time of support in Belgium and in the European Union, and in particular in the World Trade Organization, all the, all the products uh, in agriculture and fisheries will have some preferential market access in both markets. That represents a level playing field for both countries and create more competitiveness for our countries. For Belgium, this provides the opportunities to export to Mexico products such as mal, bakery products, uh, sweets, biscuits, oils, animal feeds, dairy products, chocolates, beer, wheat gluten, potatoes, apples, beer, as, as has been mentioned in the, in the seminar, pork, also that is a, an important uh, product that now can enter to Mexico at the reduced prices. Ooh, a good example is also the beer. Uh, Mexico imports 90% of total European malt imports from Belgium, and we are also import Belgium, Belgian beers, and we are exporting Mexican beer to these markets. Um, with the modernization of the agreement, three emblematic products of Belgium will reduce the tariff. For example, chocolates and frozen potatoes will reduce the tariff from 20% to zero in seven years and biscuits from 10% to zero in a maximum period of five years. Mexico will also have the opportunity to increase the exports, the ex our exports to Belgium of products such as avocado, coffee, beer, honey, bananas, mango, berries, tobacco, uh, lobsters, tequila, asparagus, oils, dried chiles, sauces, sauces uh, garlic, chickpeas, orange juice, mezcal, uh, maize flour, among other important Mexican products. In addition, uh, the FDA also includes the protection for more than, for more than 340 uh, European ge geographical indications, particularly food and drinks, and for some Mexican products uh, that such as uh, tequila, mezcal, coffee, vanilla, chile, among other products. Uh, what, uh, if there is, one, there is one question in the seminar of how congruent are Mexican regulation for goods with European regulation standards. Well, trade should comply with the domestic regulation and there is a fundamental principle of non-discrimination that is recognized in the agreement. Mexican agricultural export to the EU should comply with the all European regulation standards. The modernization global agreement will include many disciplines and regulation to facilitate trade uh, one example is the phytosanitary, and phytos uh, the phytosanitary and phytosanitary disposition. In the previous agreement, there was only one, one, one paragraph regarding this, this issue. And in the new agreement, there is a new detailed chapter of SPS issues to facilitate trade and provisions such as transparency, information exchange, procedures, and technical con consultations. In conclusion, the new agreement is an opportunity for trade diversification and strengthening bilateral cooperation. The agricultural sector is a very important one, and there is a new opportunities for the, for this uh, in this modernization. And trade will provide a wider variety of product for both markets and to create more resilient food uh, agricultural change. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adriana. And now to conclude this section of the webinar. Emiliano Gonzalez, who is in charge of economic promotion at the Mexican Embassy in Brussels, will take the floor, please. Thank you, Ambassador, uh, for your introduction. Good afternoon. I am very pleased to share this panel with you. One of the interesting questions we have received is about the possibilities and prospects of renewable energies in Mexico and Belgium. The development of technology in the renewable sector in Belgium is important. There are development and research projects in solar panel, wind energy, hydrogen, nuclear energy, and biofuels. 
Some of the important companies in Belgium in the renewable sector are Engie's, CMI, Hydrogenics Europe, among others. Engie is a global player uh, of the energy transition. CMI, uh, John Cockerell, has an important expertise in solar system generation and industrial applications. And Hydrogenics Europe is a leader in building and studying uh, industrial and commercial hydrogen generation. And we can find many other examples in Belgium. In Mexico, there is a growing renewable and energy sector due to the reduction in production costs, which are competitive with conventional technology. The most important developments are in solar, wind, and geothermal. Some of these projects are in Sonora, Sinaloa, Querétaro, Tamaulipas, Oaxaca, Baja California, Michoacán, Jalisco, and Mexico City. Mexico is a country of enormous natural wealth. In Mexico, we have wind, sun, and a great source of underground hot water for geothermal. In solar, according to data from the International Energy uh, Agency, the sun could become the largest so source of electricity in 2050. In this sense, Mexico has an advantageous geographical situation because it's the so-called solar belt. 85% uh, of Mexican territory present favorable conditions for, for the generation of solar energy. In the wind sector, there are 60, 68 parks installed and in operation. The generation cost of this technology have been reduced by 70%. And today, 16,000 direct jobs related to this industry are generated. In geothermal technology, Mexico has four geothermal plants. The plant of Cerro Prieto at Baja California is the largest plant of its kind in the world. The, the other are in Michoacán, Baja California Sur, and Puebla. To be brief, uh, this with this, uh, I conclude my remarks and I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Madame Lust, we have finished this part of the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to you, Ambassador Chacon, and to all our distinguished panelists uh, for enlightening us on the opportunities offered by the uh, new Mexico-EU Global Agreement. I think um, these interventions were very concrete and, and gave us a very cl clear view on the new opportunities, first globally and then focusing especially on um, agriculture and renewable energy. So thank you very much for that. And we will now listen to closing remarks, first of all, by Her Excellency Marta Delgado, Vice Minister of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. Uh, Mrs. Delgado Peralta is an environmentalist and the Undersecretary for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights at the Mexican Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She was elected to local Congress in 2003, and from 2006 to 2012, she served as Minister of the Environment of Mexico City. Um, so, Ms. Mrs. Delgado, I have the pleasure of giving you the floor. The pleasure is mine. Thank you very much, Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid of Belgium, representative of His Majesty the King, and Mrs. Sanik Van Koster, Director General for Bilateral Affairs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of Belgium, the CEOs of Belgian Enterprises and distinguished guests. I would like to thank Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid of Belgium for uh, her understanding contribution uh, outstanding contribution to this uh, important event. Uh, the Belgian authorities have been uh, very, very uh, enthusiastic uh, as us uh, on this event, uh, and also the Belgian authorities for the organization of this fruitful webinar uh, are very welcome, and uh, we are very grateful with all of you. It is a great opportunity right now for countries to share perspectives on the present challenging times 
we are facing together a pandemic uh, situation around the world and all the countries we uh, want to really recover the economy uh, uh, around the planet. So uh, the state of the business uh, environment between Mexico and our partners in Belgium and the European Union is paramount to uh, speed uh, up uh, on the relationship and we are very committed with this. The modernized global agreement between Mexico and the European Union is an ambitious, innovative and integral instrument committed to multilateralism. Uh, the collectively agreed rules-based international order, sustainable development and also social inclusion, which is one of the most uh, important values of the government of Mexico right now. So the agreement also supports the strengthening of our uh, high-level dialogues and cooperation mechanisms uh, in fields such as multilateralism, human rights, uh, gender equality, migration, the rule of law, uh, also the digital agenda, science, and technological innovation, the international cooperation for peace and security, among many other matters that we shared uh, uh, with, the, with the region of Europe and also with Belgium. In trade and investment, it has accomplished a much wider and mutually beneficial legal framework for both markets with uh, a win-win spirit, including more advanced disciplines and innovative commitments to support the small and medium-sized uh, enterprises, the fight against corruption, and the full agreement uh, to really align the economic uh, cooperation between us. I would like to highlight that the uh, efficiency and maturity of the strategic relation uh, with our Belgian and European partners has been important to face the sanitary crisis caused by COVID-19. One example of this was the co-sponsorship of the European Union member states uh, of the resolution presented by Mexico uh, in the United Nations to boost universal access to medicines, vaccines, and medical equipment to tackle COVID-19. Uh, the renegotiation of the global agreement constitutes uh, an achievement for Mexican foreign policy, especially in the economic sphere, since it will favor the influx of foreign investment and the diversification of our country's trade connections. The conclusion of uh, the new agreement has allowed Mexico and the European Union to send a clear message about the importance of keeping markets open and promoting multilateralism to face global challenges. So in summary, the global agreement will conduct a more and solid strategic association between Mexico and the European Union with a tangible benefit uh, to our societies and also to the world. We are so committed to continue working closely with our Belgian par partners uh, and also with the European community uh, to keep improving our business environment and sharing our best practices to keep generation, uh, generating more success stories, more exchange uh, and, uh, and wellness among our business sector. So thank you very much for uh, having me today and having this uh, extraordinary occasion of exchanging ideas and also congratulations to the organizers for this excellent event. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for these very appropriate conclusions uh, to our web webinar and thank you very much for being with us uh, today. Our last speaker for the day will be Baron Peter Timmermans, CEO of the Federation of Enterprises of Belgium. Uh, Mr. Timmermans, you have the floor. Your Royal Highness, Princess Astrid, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Ambassadors, colleagues and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start by congratulating the Embassy of Mexico and Belgium and all the co-organizers of the Belgian Economic Missions for the organization of this excellent webinar. And let me thank them also for giving me the opportunity to say a few closing words as representative of the Belgian business community. 
I had, I had the pleasure of personally taking part in the economic mission to Mexico in 2019. And it gave me the chance to witness firsthand the strong, strong relations between our countries, as well as the dynamism of the Mexican and the Belgian business community. It truly reflected what these missions are, are all about. And as a Federation of Enterprises in Belgium, we strongly support this kind of concrete follow-up activities because the impact of an economic mission doesn't, does not end when we all get on the plane back to Belgium. It's quite the opposite, the opposite. Very often, it's only the beginning. Events like these can therefore serve to showcase the results of our ec economic diplomacy. And as you know very well, this economic diplomacy is backed up by a strong business case. Our country, with its open economy, with its can-do at, at attitude, and, at, and last but not least, with its location at the heart of Europe, has a lot of has a lot to offer economically. And I dare, and I dare say that I am well placed to judge this potential, since the, the companies member of our federation are responsible for 80% of Belgian exports. And that explains also why we have been emphasizing for decades and decades the crucial need to think outside of our borders. Ladies and gentlemen, more than 80% of our GDP depends on exports. And at the same time, 90% of global economic growth in the next 10 to 15 years is expected to be generated outside of Europe. And for that reason, international trade is no longer an option but has become an absolute, absolute necess necessity for our country and our companies. And there is still untapped pot potential around current free trade agreements, as a recent study by the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency has, saw, has shown. This is why we make constant efforts to raise awareness about the opportunities of FTAs among our members, and among the Belgian business community in general, because we believe in the power of international trade. But, but ladies and gentlemen, today we see that free trade agreement, that free trade is facing pressure from different angles. All of a sudden, free trade agreements are controversial. But the voices who criticize them often fail to mention the benefits they have brought and they will still bring and not only economically. This is also the case for the EU-Mexico Global Agreement. By 2020, bilateral trade has more than tripled in 20 years since it entered into force. The opportunities of the modernization of the agreement have already been extensively and expertly discussed. It will not surprise that I echo all the potential benefits highlighted by the previous speakers. And I hope that rationalism and reason will govern the debates around the ratification of, these update, of this updated global agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude. While the economic mission to Mexico was very enriching and many fond memories come to mind, let us hope it will turn out to be only the starting point of an even stronger cooperation in the future. And we are convinced that this agreement is the way to reach it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for these uh, final comments, for looking back on the mission and reminding us of the importance of uh, free trade agreements. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this webinar. And once again, I would like to thank in particular Her Royal Highness uh, Princess Astrid uh, for honoring us with her presence today. Her Excellency Minister Cloutier, Her Excellency Vice Minister Delgado, and all our other uh, distinguished guest speakers. It was really a pleasure to have you all. And thank you also for uh, to the Embassy of Mexico and our federal and regional partners for the excellent collaboration in organizing today's event. We thank all our participants uh, for uh, joining us. And of course, the presentations will be available on our respective web websites and social media. So thank you very much again, Your Royal Highness and all of you, and thank you for your kind attention. Goodbye. <laughs>